Tankers of the 15th Brigade of the National Guard of Ukraine destroyed an assault group of invaders in the Pokrovsk sector with an accurate shot. The footage of the battle was released by the unit's press service. The soldiers defeated an assault group of Russians who had advanced in a BTR-82 armored personnel carrier and took up a position under a bridge near the village of Mikhailovka in the Donetsk region. Seven Russian soldiers who had gathered near the vehicle were actually blown up by a high-explosive fragmentation shell along with the armored vehicle. It is likely that two more soldiers standing on the other side of the vehicle, as well as the three-person crew of the armored vehicle, could have been severely injured as a result of the powerful explosion. Soldiers of the Karadag Brigade also demonstrated the explosion of another Russian armored personnel carrier on a mined road and the destruction of enemy infantry in the village itself. At the same time, the Guardsmen anti-tankers also destroyed an enemy infantry fighting vehicle using the Stugna anti-tank missile system. The site of the fighting and the destruction of the Russian assault group under the bridge is located at the western end of Mykhailivka, which may indicate that the village was captured by the invaders. Immediately behind the village is a 1.5-kilometer strip of road connecting the village to the town of Selidov in the Donetsk region. According to Commander-in-Chief Oleksandr Sersky, the situation in the Pokrovsk sector remains difficult. In recent weeks, an average of more than 50 combat engagements have been taking place daily. The enemy is using its superiority in manpower, weapons, and military equipment. But in general, the offensive is carried out by infantry assault groups. The enemy is trying to seize a section of the Kostyantinivka Pokrovsk Highway, intending to disrupt the logistics of the defense forces, he said. However, he noted that the advance is coming at a high price. The enemy is losing up to 300 soldiers on average every day. Russian forces have been steadily advancing towards Pokrovsk and frequently claim to have taken control of nearby villages. Russian tanks and infantry, supported by heavy artillery and airstrikes, captured a key settlement and gained new ground in the eastern Donbass sector recently. Roman Ponomarenko, an officer of the 12th Special Purpose Brigade, Azov, of the Ukrainian National Guard, has recently stated that the situation on the front line in the Donetsk region has spiraled out of control. For a long time, the situation in Donbass was aptly described as difficult but controlled, Ponomarenko wrote on Telegram. However, now it is out of control. Currently, it looks like our front in Donbass has collapsed. He stated that the defense of the armed forces of Ukraine, AFU, is disorganized, with troops exhausted, weakened, and many units demoralized. The reinforcements we're receiving are mostly bizified, a slang term for those who were forcibly mobilized, literally meaning they were caught, put on a bus, and drafted into the army, Ponomarenko wrote. This doesn't help. In fact, it complicates the combat operations of the units. He added that Russian forces are not advancing deeper only because they are as exhausted as the Ukrainian troops. Despite this, Ponomarenko said that the Russians maintain a significant numerical advantage and have virtually unlimited ammunition supplies. Their offensive continues, and we cannot stop it at the moment. And the AFU operation in the Kursk region is not the reason for that, he said. An analysis last month from a Washington-based think tank, the Institute for the Study of War ISW, supported Ukrainian claims there are high-value targets inside Russia within range of ATMCS. ISW said it had identified 233 Russian targets, large military bases, communication stations, logistics centers, repair facilities, fuel depots, ammunition warehouses, and permanent headquarters, in range of ATAC-MS that are immobile assets, meaning Moscow cannot move them out of harm's way. And ISW said Ukraine would only need to use ATAC-MS to strike some of those targets to have a significant impact on Russia's ability to fight on the front lines.
While it pushes for the U.S. to lift the ATACMS restrictions, Ukraine has been developing new, longer-range indigenous weapons. Zelensky announced last month that his country has a new jet-powered drone that can strike deep into Russia. He said the Palyanitsia missile drone had been used in combat for the first time and was much faster and more powerful than the country's existing fleet of drones, according to Ukrainian state media. The Ukrainian president said he wouldn't give any more specific details on the Palyanitsia, but he hailed the new weapon's long-range capabilities, hinting that it may surpass the up to 1,500 kilometer, 932 miles range of Ukraine's current drone fleet. Okay.